What's up everyone? Happy Thursday. We are one step closer to the weekend and that means more sporting events in the Valley of the Sun and a chance to keep the wind streaks rolling. But first, let's jump into today's top sports stories. Today on Cronkite Sports Now. The Sun Devils get ready for a Pac-12 showdown, while Herm Edwards takes on another role at ASU. And the Coyotes are back home looking for a win. These stories and more coming your way on Cronkite Sports Now. Thank you so much for joining us on today's episode of Cronkite Sports Now. I'm Brady King, and let's kick this thing off with the Sun Devils as they look to build off of back-to-back -back wins and go for their third straight against the 13th ranked Utes Saturday. Head, er head coach Herm Edwards credits his team's strong start in part to a particular two-word phrase. Competitive consistency, what does that mean? Have the ability week in and week out, regardless of who the opponent is, to have a chance to win a game. And to these players' credit, uh, the ones last year, and the ones this year, along with the coaching staff, they have done that. And, and I think that's all you can ask. And then from there, you build on that. Now, Herm Edwards always says that as a coach, you're also a teacher. Well, as of a few months ago, he became a teacher of not just his football players, but other students as well. I'm joined now by Cronkite Sports News reporter Matthew Roy with more. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Of course. Thank you, Brady. Coach Edwards has made his mark on all levels of football. First as an NFL player, then as a coach, and then, most importantly to those at the Kronk High School, as an analyst and a media personality. And now, the coach is going to bring lessons like don't press sand <laughs> to classrooms all around the downtown campus. Kicking off um, what is going to be a very exciting fixture for us here at the Cronkite School, uh, and that is uh, conversations, plural, uh, with Coach Herm Edwards. As of the spring of 2020, ASU head football coach Herm Edwards won't just be on the sidelines, he'll be in the classroom too, as a professor of practice at ASU's Cronkite School of Journalism. But how did this idea even come up? Well, Edwards was convinced by his former agent and current ASU athletic director, Ray Anderson, along with school president, Michael Crow. Uh, it was just kind of a conversation, and Dr. Crow was really kind of spearheading it. He says, you know, why wouldn't we do this? And I said, I'll be fine to do it if you want to do it in the spring. After that, Anderson had to convince Cronkite School Dean Chris Callahan, and well, that wasn't very hard. Chris was gleeful and instantly uh, supportive uh, and very aggressively uh, wanted to move to make it happen. When he called me, he just Ray, you know, Ray and I know each other very well, and he called me, and he was about halfway through uh, the idea. I'm like, I get it, I love it, let's do it. Next time Edwards is in one of these classrooms, it won't be as coach, it'll be as professor, and he might just have a few surprises up his sleeve. What he will also do is bring so many of his friends and colleagues and peers in the, in the business here to ASU's campus to add their voice to what he's trying to uh, teach and present. You know, whether I, I bring in folks uh, along with myself that, that have worked in television, that would kind of be interesting too. The format for the classes or lectures is still up in the air, but one thing is not. Edwards and Anderson will be the first football coach and AD duo in the Power Five conferences to also be faculty members. The fact that they are also the only African-American duo has Anderson hoping this opens the door for others. And the fact that we're two African-American men uh, able to have this opportunity, uh, we just want to make sure that it's an opportunity and a message that gets across to all the folks who may be interacting with us, uh, notwithstanding race, uh, color, religion, creed. Edwards and Anderson have been friends for over 25 years and are now innovating and making history in the Valley of the Sun Devils. Dean Callahan said starting in the spring, Edwards will teach a multitude of different ways, including seminars, lectures, and classes. But don't expect the coach to come in and teach every class, because he does have some work winning to worry about. You're right, Matt. He definitely does. And speaking of winning, coming off their 4-2 win in Winnipeg Tuesday, the Coyotes are back on home ice as the Predators are in town tonight. Looking for back-to-back -back wins for the first time this season, head coach Rick Tockett knows the power play is one way the Yotes can keep the pucks rolling toward net. Well, it's nice to get the power play. Those a couple of big goals for us, you know. Um, you know, I thought Pelikilo, you know, stuck together there. You know, that's a hell of a power play over there. They had some moments where they had, you know, they're buzzing. Um, but it was a nice win. You know, uh, Kemp's was good, really good for us again tonight, and uh, we weathered the storm. You know, that's a hard four-checking team over there. 
Puck drops at 7 p.m. at Gila River Arena. The Coyotes are 5-1-1 one one in their last seven games at, against Nashville at home. We'll see if the Yotes can power through to another win tonight. Now let's talk about the ladies. As part of the Arizona Fall League experience, the Society for American Baseball Research teamed up with the International Women's Baseball Center for a conference highlighting women's contributions to the game of baseball. Now the speakers at this conference discuss ways women can get involved with baseball on and off the field. Debbie Castaldo, an executive at Arizona Diamondbacks, shared her insight on navigating the corporate and community aspects of MLB. Elizabeth Ben is playing an important role in growing girls baseball participation. A leader by example, she also pitches in the NYC Metro Baseball League. Multiple, multiple women speaking said they grew up not knowing they could work in baseball and they are trying to change that for future generations. This shouldn't be a surprise and it's not just the exception that can do this. It should become well, it's just part of it, and it's no big deal that the person who walks into the room as the general manager of the team is you know, whoever it happens to be, male, female, it doesn't really matter. And I think that's the end goal, is to simply get away from the idea that it's the exception, it's not the norm. The two, three, and one cards are headed to the Big Apple this weekend to face the two and four Giants. It's number one overall pick, Kyler Murray, versus number six overall pick, Daniel Jones. Murray showed promise for the future last week in putting up 340 passing yards. Which QB will prevail? We'll see. Kickoff is set for 10 a.m. on Sunday. The XFL is making a return and just completed its draft over the course of two days. There will be plenty of former Arizona college players featured in the league, including two-time Pat Tillman, Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year, and Sun Devil Will Sutton. Arizona Wildcat standout Scooby Wright and former NAU Lumberjack Wes Sutton. You'll also see many prominent players from the Alliance of American Football, which disbanded halfway into its first season last spring. The XFL kicks off their season in February 2020. And that does it for today's edition of Cronkite Sports Now. For Arizona sports stories from all around the valley, visit the Cronkite Sports tab on ArizonaSports.com. And as always, for top Arizona news stories, head over to our website at cronkitenews.azpbs.org and be sure to tune in to tonight to our 5 p.m. nightly newscast on Arizona PBS. On behalf of the entire Cronkite Sports Now crew, thanks so much for watching, and we hope to see you back here tomorrow, same time, same place.